Hi everybody, welcome to a new machine learning from scratch tutorial. Today we're going to implement the SVM algorithm using only built in Python modules and NumPy. The SVM or support vector machine is a very popular algorithm. It follows the idea to use a linear model and to find a linear decision boundary, also called a hyperplane, that best separates our data. And here the choice as the best hyperplane is the one that represents the largest separation or the largest margin between the two classes. So we choose the hyperplane so that the distance from it to the nearest data point on each side is maximized. So if you have a look at this image then we want to find a hyperplane and the hyperplane has to satisfy this equation w times x minus b equals zero and we want to find the hyperplane so that the distance to both the to both classes is maximized so we use the class plus one here and minus one here so this distance or the margin should be maximized and first let's have a look at the math behind it so it's a little bit more complex than in my previous tutorials but I promise that once you have understood it the final implementation is fairly simple so we use the linear model w times x minus b that should be zero and then um, our um, our function should also satisfy the condition that w times x minus b should be greater or equal than 1 for our class plus 1. So all the samples here must lie on the left side of this equation or this line here and all the samples of the class minus one must lie on the right side from this equation. So if we put this mathematically, then we should, it must satisfy w times x minus b should be greater or equal than one for class one, or it should be less or equal than minus one for class minus one. So if you put this in only one equation, then we multiply our um, linear function with the class label and this should be greater or equal than one. So this is the condition that we want to satisfy. And now we want to come up with the W and the B, so our weights and the bias. And for this we use the cost function and then apply gradient descent. So if you're not familiar with gradient descent already, then please watch one of my previous tutorials, for example, the one with linear regression. There I explain this a little bit more in detail. So now let's um, continue. So we use the user cost function here and in this case we use the hinge loss and this is defined as the maximum of 0 and 1 minus and here we have our condition yi times our linear model so what this means is if if we plot the hinge loss and here the blue line is the hinge loss so this is either 0 if um, y times f is greater or equal than 1. So if um, they have the, the same sign then it's 0 and so if they um, yeah if they are correctly classified and are larger than 1 then our loss is 0. So this means if we have a look at this image again if for the green class, if it's if it lies on this side, then it's zero. And for the blue class, if it lies on this side, then it's also zero. And otherwise, um, then we have a linear function. So the further we are away from our um, decision boundary line, 
the higher is our loss and so this is one part of our cost function and the other part is as I already said we want to maximize the the margin here and uh, so between these two classes and the margin is defined as 2 over the magnitude of W so this is dependent from our weight dependent on our weight vector so we want to maximize this and therefore we want to ch minimize the magnitude so we put this or add this to our um, cost function so we also put this term the magnitude of W to the power of 2 times a lambda parameter and then here we have our hinge loss so the lambda parameter tries to find a trade-off between these two terms so it says basically says which is more important so we want to of course we want to have the right classification we want to lie on the correct side of our lines but we also want to have the the line such that the margin is is maximized um, so yeah so if you um, look at the two cases if our if we are on the correct side of the line so if y i times f on x f of x is greater or equal than one then we simply we only have this term because this is the hinge loss is zero and otherwise then um, our cost function is this here and now we want to minimize that so we want to get the derivatives or the gradients of our cost function so in the first case if we are greater or equal than one um, our derivative um, is only is 2 times lambda times w so and here we only look at one component of our w so we get rid of the magnitude and the derivative with respect to the b is zero so please double check that for yourself here I will not explain the derivatives in details and in the other case so if if y i times f on x is not greater or equal than one then our derivative with respect to the w is this equation here and the derivative with respect to our bias is only y i so again please double check that for yourself and then when we have our gradients we can use the update rule so the new weight is the old weight minus because we use gradient descent so we go into negative direction minus the learning rate or the step size times the derivative so these are our update rules and now I hope you've understood the concept and the math behind this and now we can start implementing it so this is now straightforward so first of all we import numpy s and p of course and then we create our class svm which will get an init method and here I will put in a learning rate which will get a default value of 0.001 and it will get a lambda parameter which will also get a default and I will say this is point zero 0.01 so this is usually also a small value and then it will get the number of iterations for our optimization which will get the default of 1000 so then I will simply store them so I will say self.lr equals learning rate self dot lambda param equals lambda param so note that I cannot use lambda here because lambda is a keyword in Python for the 
uh, lambda function. So yeah, then self dot n iters equals n iters. Then I will say self dot w equals none and self dot b equals none. So I have to come up with them later. And then we define our two functions. So as always, one is the predict function where we fit the training samples and the training labels. And the, uh, sorry, this is the fit method. And the other one is the predict method where we predict the labels of the test samples. And now let's start with the predict method because this is very short. So um, we want to, as I said, if we look at the math, we apply this linear model and then we look at the sign of this. So if it's positive, then we say it's class one. And if it's negative, then we say it's class uh, minus one. So we say linear output equals numpy dot dot. So the dot product of x and self dot w minus self dot b. And then we choose the sign. So we can simply say return numpy dot sign of this linear output. So this is the whole predict implementation. And now let's continue with the fit method. So first of all, um, as I said, we use the classes plus one and minus one here. So we want to make sure that our y has only minus one and plus one. So oftentimes it has zero and one. So let's convert this. So let's say y underscore equals and here we can use numpy dot where this will get a condition. So we say y um, if this is less or equal than zero, then um, we put in minus one and otherwise we put in plus one. So this will convert all the zeros or smaller numbers to minus one and the other numbers to plus one. And now let's get the number of samples and the number of features. And this is simply x dot shape because our input vector x is an numpy nd array um, where the number of rows is the number of samples and the number of columns is the number of features. Then we want to initialize our W and our B and we simply put in zeros in the beginning. So we say self dot W equals numpy zeros of size n features. So for each feature component, we put in a zero for our weight component. And then we say self dot B equals zero. And now we can start with our gradient descent. So we say for underscore because we don't need this in range self dot and iter iter. So the number of iterations we want to do this. And then we iterate over our training samples. So I say for index and x i in enumerate x. So this will give me the current index and also the current sample. And now what I want to do now is let's have a look at the math again. So I want to Come, I want to calculate the weights at, or the derivative of our cost function uh, with respect to the W and with respect to the bias. And here I first, but at first I look if this condition is um, satisfied. So I will say 
uh, and the condition is yi times our linear function so I say condition equals y underscore of the current index times and then the linear function so numpy dot um, of the current sample and our self dot w minus self dot b um, this should be greater or equal than one so if this is satisfied then the condition is true and otherwise it's false so now I say if condition so if this is true then our derivatives look like this so the derivative with respect to the b is just zero and so we only need this so I say um, so it's 2 times lambda times w and then in our update we go in so we say the new weight is the old weight minus the learning rate times this so I write this in one step so I say self dot w minus equals self dot learning rate times and now here we have two times self dot lambda parameter times self dot w so this is the first update or if our condition is satisfied and we only need this update and otherwise we say self dot w minus equals self times lr the learning rate times and let's again have a look at the equation so it's 2 times lambda times w minus yi times xi so 2 times our lambda times the w minus numpy dot so I want to multiply our vectors xi and yi so the y underscore of the current index so this is our update for the w and our self dot b is minus equals self times learning rate times the derivative and the derivative is only or just yi so only y underscore of the index and now we're done so this is the whole implementation and now let's test this so I've written a little test script that will import this SVM class and then it will generate a some test samples so it will generate two classes and then I will create my SVM classifier and fit the data and then I wrote a little um, function to visualize this so you can find the code on github by the way so please check that out for yourself and now if we run this so let's say python svm underscore test dot pi and now this should calculate the weights and the bias and it should also plot the decision function so the yellow line and the two lines on both sides here and we see that it's working so yeah that's all about the SVM I hope you enjoyed this and if you like this please subscribe to my channel and see you next time bye